Headline news. Hurricane Nicole. Coastal homes crumbling into the ocean. I don't know if anybody's seen that on the news, but uh, those big, beautiful homes right on the river are crumbling, crumbling into the ocean. Now, we have to take a look and say, how is our life built? How are we building our life? We are builders and we're stewards of our life, are we not? Amen? Our life is the most important thing you own. Not your Mercedes, right? Not your Bentley. Amen? And not your, not your stock portfolio. It's your life, which is your soul. You, you are eternal. And you're temporarily placed on this planet. Amen? You will not last but 120, 130 years. You're, you're, you have an expiration date. You know, there's a birthday. You were born. And there's the dash, and then you die. It's what you do in here that counts. Amen? It's what, what you do, and nobody's promised tomorrow. Okay? So we need to live with wisdom. So we need to build our life on the rock. The rock is Jesus Christ. Amen? Jesus clearly says in Mark chapter 8, beginning in verse 36, it says, For what shall it profit a man? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You know, when we, when we see Christ, he's not going to say, hey, what's in your pocket, Fred? What, is it? what do you got in your pocket? What would you bring me? Because I've never seen a casket lined up with their stuff, have you? You know, when we see somebody at the funeral home, we see him laying in the casket. There's nothing in there except a skeleton. Their person, their spirit is gone. And all the things that we got upset we didn't have on this earth, they don't go. See, and there's a deception and a distraction going on in the body of Christ over materialism. Materialism, okay? Mater the material life is a distraction, okay? The popularity life. If you left this earth and all you wanted was material things and popularity and you missed out on the most important thing you own, which is your soul, okay, you missed existence with Jesus Christ. The Bible's clear, John 17, 3, to know him, to walk with him, to be intimate with him is everything. It's everything. There's nothing higher than Jesus Christ, knowing Jesus Christ. It's not winning a Super Bowl. It's not getting a Dove Award. It's not being on Christian Network. It's not being a best-selling author. It's not being a leading evangelist. I can fly all over the world. Many do that don't know Jesus Christ. And we see many leaders in the body falling away from the real Jesus. And they're leading the sheep in the wrong way. And I... Say tonight to them, beware of the shepherd, because the shepherd has warned everybody in Matthew 18, 6, you offend one and cause them to stray from me. It is better for you to wrap a rock around your neck and be drowned into the depths of the sea. Amen. So the number one thing you and I have tonight, which we do, we have our soul in Jesus Christ. You are a winner. No matter how much the devil tells you, you're a loser. He's a loser. He lost years ago. He was thrown like lightning from heaven. And he will never go back. He is damned and doomed into the, into the bottomless pit. He will never stop falling. He will never stop falling. He is, he is forever and eternally judged by the living God. Amen? And so the most important thing we own is our soul. And if you have your soul and it's the only person with you, it's Jesus Christ at Thanksgiving. Well, you've got it all, girlfriend. You've got it all. If you don't have anybody over for Thanksgiving, but you set up a table for the Lord, amen, and you, you bring out some bread, bring out some bread. This is the bread of life. Eat it. Take, take some communion. Celebrate who God is. Amen. Those with Christ have everything, not those with the big fancy trees and all the relatives that are drinking. Who knows who's going to get in a wreck on the way home and end up in eternal fire, okay? 
We don't want to take off into eternal fire. Amen? We see it every day. And these people running around as their homes are crumbling into the ocean. And God said, that's me. I am the weatherman. I bring the weather. I bring judgment to stop you from going into eternal fire. Because it's not your big, beautiful couch and your mean coat that's going to make or break you. It's knowing me and what you did with me. Because you will stand before my presence, and in my presence is holy fire. I am God. Amen. And those that go with Christ will live forever in pleasures forevermore. I don't know about you, but I want pleasures forevermore. Amen. I ain't going to two-step out there in a bar and dance with some meat on a stick. That's what I was thinking about these guys that don't have the mind of Christ. I got, I, the other day I was walking and I'm saying, they're like meat on a stick. The stick's the skeleton and they're just meat on, the, on a stick because they don't have the mind of Christ. I ain't trading a, a piece of meat on a stick, a one-nighter with something like that, over eternal life, girlfriend. <laughs> Amen? And I don't want to hook up with one of those, do you? I mean, there's three kind of people on this earth. We have three heads. Okay? And we need to be very careful about our relationships. Because a lot of times at Christmas, everybody gets kind of lonely in Thanksgiving. And you know, I don't have anybody to sit with me by the fire. I, I haven't had a ring for years and I haven't had a date. Nobody's calling and texting me, telling me how great I am. <laughs> Amen? And God's like, I'm here. I'm here. Are you going to be like Eve and say, you're not enough, God? You're not enough. You ain't enough. And there, there goes another one. And God's like, there goes another Eve. I wasn't enough. They couldn't just hold out. One more block. A day in the Lord is a thousand years. Okay? And we got three kind of people. We have the one that's a Christian, a wise Christian, the one that lives on the top over here on the poster. They've departed iniquity. They're perfecting holiness. They've given their life to serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the great I am, the first and the last, the alpha and the omega. Amen? They're the intelligent beings. They're the intelligent beings. You have to throw off carnality, throw off the world, throw off the lies of the devil. Then there's the Christians that give place to the devil. They don't want to leave. Uh, they don't want to leave sin. They don't want to leave anything. They just they want both. And God's like, I'll split you right down the middle, and you're going into hell. That's how I went to hell 21 years ago. I was one of these because I didn't know. Amen. And when Jesus took me into hell, He said, "Honey," He said, "The devil. That's the devil. That's the one of the entrances. He gets my people, and they go in there." He said, "If you want to keep the devil." You'll go down with the devil because he's not welcome in my home. This is my home. Heaven is my home. And in my father's house, which is your father if you do what's right, are many mansions. Not like your little condo you live in. Amen? Or maybe somebody's out there underneath a bridge. If you have Christ, you got more than any. You're the richest people on the earth. Amen? You may not have the big, big house your neighbor does, and you wonder why I can't have a swimming pool yet. But if you have Jesus, you got more than anybody. Okay? Then you got the people running around that are anti-Christ. I don't want anything to do with Christ. Get out of here. I've got it all. They're the billionaires and Forbes, and they're, they're in every mountain God made. Amen? And we need to pray for them, but they're going straight to hell. The only hope is for us to perfect holiness, working out our salvation, enjoying Christ, coming out of the world into God and serving God, amen, where we're assigned and how we're assigned. And all of you are assigned. That's why you're here, okay? Because God has an assignment and a place for you, amen? You were born with it. You were created with it. You know, I've been studying this. I don't know how we got off on this, but anyway, I've been studying about music and how Lucifer, in the book of Ezekiel, it says his musical instruments were prepared in him, prepared in him before he popped out. Amen? So what is prepared in you? 
What did God put in you and prepare in you to come out to this earth? Amen? He prepared in you your giftings and your place. Isn't that cool? But you know what? Lucifer got full of himself and said, well, I don't need you anymore. And we can see many leaders in the kingdom of God that are in danger because they've crossed the line. They don't worship Christ for who he is. He's the shepherd, but he's a judge. He's love, but he's wrath. Amen. Amen. He, he is a forgiver, but he, he has requirements for you. Amen. This is who Christ is. And to know Christ is our highly, highest calling. Amen. And then to serve Christ is our second. But to know him. Many people want to serve him. They want a platform. They want a place. They want to be a teacher. They want best-selling books. They want the big crowd. But Christ says, you don't know me. But you want to represent me. I've got so much to get rid of. Most of the world that represents me doesn't know me. They don't spend time with me. They're too busy on the phone talking to their friends. He said, they're too busy running around all these fellowship groups of people that don't know me. But they want to teach. He said, but they don't know me. And Christ is done. Christ is done. So if you want to serve Christ, you have to know Christ. Amen? If you went to work at a a Mercedes-Benz dealership, and before they put you out on the sales team, they said, okay, here's a big book. (laughs) I want you to tell me about this car in a week. We're going to have a test. And so Princess takes the book, and she's kind of half-heartedly. She throws it down in her back seat, and she never even opened it. But it's time for her test, amen? And the, the guy brings her in, and she's like, you know, kind of half-heartedly. I didn't really care about your materials. I don't, you know, and, you know, I, I don't know too much about it. He goes, what kind of engine is in this car? And she goes, well, I don't know. He's like, you're not working here. There's a door. This is God. Everybody wants to work for God, but nobody wants to know me, he says. I'm on every page of this book. But nobody takes the time to read me. Why do you want to serve me? Why do you want to work for me? So you can be popular and have your picture taken with all your best-selling books? This Christmas, we need to take some time for Christ personal time and we need to have a new year's resolution to say you know what god i want to just get to know you if it's just you and me and we go down to have a pretzel at wawa for thanksgiving or maybe we'll go throw some bread to some ducks at a park at christmas i'm the gift he says But nobody knows me. Nobody unwraps me. But they all want to work for me. He said, I got a whole earth to reset. And I'll never forget when he walked in, into my my place there 21 years ago. And when I saw him standing there, I was like, (gasps) you know, I had so many different scenes there all in my sequel book. But he stood there in his white, and he just looked at me like that. And I went, and I had to look away because his eyes were so powerful. And and when I looked, and he went, and it was like he, he blew right through my brain, everything I thought I ever knew about him. He said, I'm rebuilding you. I'm resetting you. Because it's got to go. The stuff you believe in, the stuff you've heard preached. He said, I am the book. I am the scroll. I am God. We go to church, but we don't know him. We go hear ministers that are living in sin preach about him, and their messages are empty and void, and we leave the same. We don't change our lives. We don't reform our lives. We don't clean out our closets and our liquor cabinets. We don't stop watching the idiot box and the devil's entertaining us all night long, but we want to be a preacher? 
We go get our cards read and we call, we look at our horoscopes. But we want to be a preacher. We want to represent Jesus Christ. We have a little gin and tonic hidden on the bottom, bottom place in our office. And we have universities that represent so-called Jesus and your doctrine is trash. And through their false doctrine, they're going to bring upon themselves swift destruction. And 2 Peter 2.1 tells us, or 2 Peter, I believe it's 2.1. He said, false teachers, false doctrines, false lives. And the end of that facade is swift destruction. Does that sound like something we want? He said, on stage, you look wonderful. He said, I'm the God in Re Revelation. I go visit these places. He said, you know what? Pastor Smith, this is Christ talking. I like your choir. Your Sunday school's not too bad. But I see you hooking up with that hooker every week. Well, your wife's over there baking bread for the women's ministry. I, I see you checking in with that whore. But you're the heart. And if you don't repent, eternal fire. Because God requires of his leaders. There's a picture burning into my, into my mind right now of, of the Ark of the Covenant and, and Joshua and Moses bowing before it. They had the fear of God. They had the fear of God. They had the love of God, but they had fear of God. He's holy. Be ye holy as I am holy, says God. Be ye perfect as I am perfect. We must get back to loving God the way he commands. He's number one or he's not interested especially with his leaders, and that's what this room is, you know. It's called leadership. It tr truly is. The, tr the seerness of holiness. Yeah, but God, this life is boring. Holiness is boring. Knowing me is boring. He said, you want to stand before the crowd, but where are you going to take him? You've got to bring them to me. So the question tonight, I guess, is, is your eternal soul your most valuable asset or is it your stock portfolio? Amen. It could be your, your resume impresses you or maybe it's your curriculum vitae or perhaps you have your doctorate degree or your master's degree and my God, that impresses me. But the only thing that impresses God is do you know me? Do you know in the Bible it says he had respect for Moses? When I read that, I wept. God respecting a man. <laughs> you know how you earn God's respect? You honor him 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You don't take a vacation from righteousness. Amen. I couldn't believe it when I read God respected Moses. Tonight we're going to look at music. The title of this message is The Runner. A look at music. We all like music, don't we? Music was created by God. Music originated from God. God is the creator, not Lucifer. Amen? 
God is the creator, not man. You know, when I saw God, I thought, oh, no. I really did. I thought, oh, no, because he had a look on his face, okay? Scared me to death at times, especially when I, I felt this boot going up my, my behind, and I looked to the rearview mirror, and there he sat like this. And he had a look to kill almost. I mean, it was like, I thought, oh, my God, in my hands, it was about 2 a.m. It's in the book, Real God. About 2 a.m., and I'm trying to outrun him because he had come into my cottage and wanted to do inner healing. And I kept seeing all these snakes on the floor. And he says, you want to get rid of them or keep them? I said, don't show me this stuff. Don't show me this stuff. It scared me. He's like, I'm going to either show you and heal you or you're keeping them. Well, I run out. I get in my car. It was a Land Cruiser big black land cruiser, you know, and I'm taken off for the other side of the city to a place I shouldn't have gone, thinking I can escape God. And I'm in there, you know, and I, I'm just, and I pull up to this house, and that, nothing good in that house ever happened. It was full of sin, full of sin. And I'm thinking, oh, no, the lights aren't on, you know. I'm getting kind of, kind of nervous. I said, oh, the lights aren't on. I go in there, and nobody's there. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I went to turn the lights on. Well, the electricity had been turned off. I get back in that car. I pull out, and I'm like this. And I pull out, and all of a sudden, this boot. And I look back there, and there's sick God. And he was like, get back to the cottage. I was just floored. And I'm passing. Uh, it was all downtown. And everybody's partying and drunk out there and all the clubs that, you know, I've been to too. My short little skirt, right? And I thought if they could see him. And they do. And when God appears and he's in the back seat, that's not a good thing. He should be in the lead. And I thought, what's wrong with you? Here's what he said. Your damnation and your lack of knowledge due to my corrupt, dirty floor that they take the tithes and offerings of my people, but they do not educate them. When my commandment to my leaders was go and teach all nations, now your lack of knowledge is killing you. That's what's wrong with me. <laughs> Your damnation, Annie, is what's wrong with me. I said, what are you talking about? I was raised in this church. I've never been to this church. I never was taught by anybody like this. I was in this church. I read my little devotionals, streams in the desert, little chapter a day. Didn't mean it. I, I just go by it. If I didn't understand it, I just threw it on my... Threw it on my bed, on my chair, went in, lit a cigarette, did my hair, whatever. And, you know, say, saying any kind of music I wanted to on the way to work. I don't know what you guys did. You know, the weekend comes, you know, you know, have your sister over to a gla glass of wine, maybe a joint. It's the kind of place I was raised. God's done with this. God is on a mission to clean up this earth. And he's, he's going to take, I just see him now in it like a contraption. And he will bring aboard anybody that wants to come. But if you don't come into his holiness and into the place that he requires of you, you will be left away. You will be washed away with the crowd. He is the ark. Amen. He is the ark. And so we have these three, these three people, the one with Christ, the one with Christ and the devil, and the devil. And this is our mind every day when we get out of bed. The condition of your mind will take you to life or to death, both on the earth and then into eternity. I went into eternity. I can't say enough about the glory and the beauty and the majesty of heaven. It was astounding. Nobody wants to come back. Amen. 
But hell was a nightmare. It, it's just, it was extreme opposites. Total glory and total terror. Terror. I was terrorized. Amen. And you know, hell, it has no exit. Have you ever been in a bad week and you want to exit? I want this to end. This, this thing keeps on throbbing and I feel this pain. I want it to end. But what if, what if it was forever? There was, there's no exit down there. Amen? And so the only way that we're going to make it as Christians, especially in this generation, we've got all kind of trash here, is to know him. By reading him every morning. If we want to stay here and go up with Christ, we have to have a relationship with Christ. Not a relationship with Netflix. Netflix ain't going to teach us about Jesus. Amen, girlfriend? Good to see you. I love your big smile. <laughs> but, uh, you know, now Netflix it ain't going to teach us unless it's a movie about Jesus. Amen? But if we want to go up in the rapture, and we want to, we don't want to experience all this tribulation hell that will happen. We need to live right because he's not taking this one the full, amen. And we never know when this will be or our last day. It's very, very, very important that we leave the, the normal world of Christianity and have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We are to be reconciled to God. And wherever you're, you're, you, you, know, you go to church and you know, make sure that you are in this word because there's a lot of false teaching. This should be the most important thing in your morning is this, okay? I know coffee's important. I love coffee. But if we don't have this, we're not going to have the mind we need to make it, okay? I can't... Can't stress it enough. Well, I want to tell you, we're going to, you know, this is about music, and I'm not sure how many weeks this will proceed, but it's a look at music. It's a very important factor in our lives, is it not, when we hear music? Everywhere we go, we hear music, don't we? We go into restaurants, we hear music. We go to look at clothes, we hear music. Everywhere we go, we hear music. But that music is generally not Christian music, is it? Now, I purchased an estate home years ago. I had an estate uh, of a famous rock star. When I went and I told my realtor what I wanted, uh, I had a really nice home that we had built, but I wanted something bigger and uh, the kids could roam and what have you. And so my realtor came over to take me for different tours of homes. And uh, she said, this really wasn't on my list to show you. But I have to stop by this home to meet the realtor, to give him a key or exchange something. Do you mind? And I said, well, of course not. And I pulled up and I was like, oh, this is beautiful. It was a beautiful iron gate and you drove in all these trees, a nice private uh, entrance. And it was four acres and it was stunning. And they had a guest house and this big, beautiful home right on the water. And uh, I heard the Lord say, this is your house. I said, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. And uh, of course, everything that I ever got in life was by faith, amen. If I didn't have $20, you know, or 200,000 or 2 million, or whatever I needed, God would make the way, amen. And so that's, it. that's called faith, amen. When he says, I want you to do something or start something, you said, with what? He said, with me. And as you go forward, I'll supply. Amen. That's how he is. That's faith. I don't think Moses had a plan of a big ship coming and taking all the Israelites over to the other side with Miriam and her tambourine. Amen. I mean, they didn't have a, they didn't have that. They had God. That part of the sea with the breath of his nostrils. Amen. So anyway, I said, this is my, my home. And uh, sure enough, I moved in. I didn't know a rock star owned it until later. He's one of the leading rock stars in our nation. And if I mentioned the band, you would know him. But uh, that's not the reason that I bought the home. I, I bought the home 
because I like the home. Amen. Now, I used to go to a church, okay, talking about a church where I'm from. I used to go to church, and the pastor always had a thing about he wanted to be a musician, but he ended up a pastor. But this pastor would sing the worldly songs on the altar of Almighty God. He would sing Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. I'm not kidding you. I'm not. Yes, this is how I grew up. Now, and this is it. This was a born again, spirit filled church. Missionaries all over the world. Look, okay. And, and so, what would happen to somebody that did it? I, I didn't know the word like I do today. This is years ago, okay. So I would go home, and you know, back then, you know, we bought CDs, okay. And I would stop off at the store and buy a big stack. I can see myself walking around this store and just buy a big stack of whatever I felt like because, I mean, the pastor, pastor sings all this worldly music, right? So what's wrong if I don't? Because we, we look at the pastors like, if the pastor does it, it's okay. Now, this is the danger that I'm talking about, okay? And this is what God is livid. He said, if you cause one of these little ones that believe in me to stumble, it's better that you tie a rock around your neck and drown yourself into the ocean. We don't want to forget this as we go through this life. This isn't a joke. So, you know, I, I went home and I, I had all these songs and I would sing them and, and uh, everything was cool, all right, until the appearance. Until... <laughs> The appearance. You know, Christ appeared to me in 2001. He came in 2001. And 2006, I believe it was, he came and he was dancing. We talked about it last week in my big estate home in the driveway. And he showed me Casper with drugs. And he showed me nicotine. <laughs> And now he's going to show me music. And I said, oh, my God. Okay. No, but those three things, the devil still had a place in me. See, when you come into Christ, you're supposed to work out your salvation, meaning you get rid of iniquity. Amen? Yeah. And you live right. If anybody thinks Christianity is boring, you don't know Christ. He's a creator. And you can go on to my Bible uh, study called Life More Abundantly. I have pages of things to do here. Okay, I mean, there was pages and pages of things to do. But there was three places in me. There was drugs we talked about. There was cigarettes, nicotine, we talked about. And now he's going to show me music. I said, oh, no, here we go. And, you know, when Christ decides to appear and he's like me walking around, you can see me. And he's showing you all this stuff. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you close your eyes, you'll see right through your eyelid. Because I tried it. He said, I didn't appear and I'm going to show you something for you to close your eyes. But if you choose to close your eyes, it's okay because I can make you see right through them. And he can. And he did. <laughs> he says, so let's just open them up and deal with this. He said, it's time to put on your big girl pants. He said, your baby days are over. Because we go from a child we go from a child to a young man, the Bible calls it, or young women, right, to a father. God wants you to mature just like you. If you had kids, you wouldn't want to push them around the stroller at the age of 35. People wonder about your mental health. Amen. I mean, here comes little Poochie at 35, and she's still sucking on her thumb. And mama's changing the 35-year-old's diaper. There's something wrong with it, you know. It's abnormal. And God said, the diapers are coming off. And all of a sudden, Christ is talking to me, and pfft, this one was really massive. You know, Casper was something, the nicotine, but when music, it was horrific. And I could feel <laughs> angels landing, no telling how tall they are and how big they were. And Christ said, I'm... I'm got your shield on you. He said, I've got the shield on you. You're going to be fine. And I could feel the shield coming down and, and I'm like, oh no, oh no, oh no. And at the same time, I'm getting a little nervous. I was in my home office and I had a beautiful gold set tea. 
an old fashioned little little gold set tea. It was an antique. I got at an antique store and I had it recovered and all that. You know, I was into all that stuff before I found out I had a soul. <laughs> I like that stuff. Don't get me wrong. But if it's between my soul and an antique set tea, <laughs> I'm going to choose my soul, girlfriend. So <laughs> all of a sudden, boom, I saw him. And he stood like this. And he had on red and black stripes. Now, God had on red and white stripes, representing the blood and the water, the Holy Spirit. Amen? And the word. Satan counterfeits him, and he had on black and red stripes. And he had a sword. And he was mouthing off, and he was going like this in my office. He goes, see, she's got something right here. See that? See that? What well, was Lucifer? It was a Lucifer because he's the one in charge of music. Musical instruments were prepared in him. And in the book of Ezekiel, he was in charge of worship. He was the most beautiful one of all, the angel. He is the ruler. We, we studied the four major parts last week. The rulers, the, the spiritual wickedness, the principalities. Amen? Well, he's top dog, baby. He's top dog of the demons. And he was right there in his rock star's house that got famous on a song about hell. No kidding. And he wasn't happy that God had moved in a couple years ago and now he's doing evangelism in this office, but with my stuff there? He said, you know I got a legal place. I got a right to be here. I have a legal right in her. And God's just standing there. And I was shaking. And I went to hold my little book I was writing. Real God back then. I had another day. But I was, I was like this. The Bible says to put on the whole armor of God that after you've done the will of God, you're able to stand against the walls of the devil like this. Not hover in a corner. But I was shaken. I was shaken because I was wrong. Because he had sin. He had a right to be there. He had a right to accuse me before God. And to hold his sword at me. And I'm like, oh, my God. Finally, I grabbed the big family Bible. I didn't know what to do. Is that big, you know, the big family Bibles they give you? Some kid gets christened and somebody gives you a Bible you couldn't carry. You break your back with it, you know. But I grabbed that thing and I shoved it in him. And I said, you're the one that's polluted this earth. You're the one that's caused all these problems. He says, I got a place in you and I can destroy you. And he was right. Ephesians 4.27 says, give the devil no place. But I had given him a place. We talked about drugs. Now, this is after my peers went to heaven and hell. Five years I've been doing evangelism in his places in a house that one of his head honchos lived in, rock star, got famous on a song about hell. Okay? And he flew in one day. By God. Three, music. God said, Annie, you know the deal. God's real calm. He, yeah, he is with Ariel. But he was, I was like, and Satan was like this, and I was like, but God's just like this, you know, because he's in charge. It says, God will turn you over to the devil so your flesh is destroyed so he can save your soul. It says, fear God. He's got Satan on a leash, but you want to let him in. He'll, he'll come in and break, break, take you down at far. Ugh. So the deal is, is we obey God and resist it, right? And God takes care of us. But we want to play cupcake with him, you know, Tootsie's fellowship with him. Then he can come in and destroy us. So anyway, God says, Annie, you got to do something with this music. Well, all of a sudden, I threw the Bible down and I went running. I mean, my big house was over almost, what, 6,000 square feet. I had a lot of room that I could run. But the thing was, when I ran away, he ran after me. Now, I wasn't doing what the God said to stand against it because I couldn't stand against my enemy because he had a place in me. The book of Joshua. He's like, what happened, God? He said, there's sin in the camp. That's what happened. You're not going to defeat the enemy when there's sin in the camp. You can't have a victorious life and go up if you're going to have sin in the camp. 
I sat down, I, I started running, I ran into the big living room, and I sat down on my wingback chair, you know. I used to decorate so nice for Christmas, and I'm looking at the fireplace going, this is crazy, man. And God's like, this ain't crazy. And he put that sword right here. He comes up. And I'm like. And finally, I, I didn't quite know what to do. And God's working with me. You know, he knows my level of intelligence. But honey, the diapers are coming off. And the sin goes out. It's time to grow. And I took off running upstairs in my master bedroom. And that's when God let it be quiet. He says, listen. The music has to go, Annie. The only music I allow my people to listen to is music that has been made from a born-again spirit. He said, my kingdom. He said, my kingdom. Born again. He said, but I understand you got it from the lead pastor that it's okay to listen to music, any kind of music you want. He said, it's time to clean this house out of all music, CDs, and everything that has been made from a born-again spirit, person. That's the only kind of music that I allow. Now, is, it, is that news to you guys? But you know what? When we dive into this, and I did a whole Bible study on Real Run of Music, okay? if you want to go in there and get the details, although we're going to continue forward with this because it's something we need to know, amen? We need to understand music because music, music is a carrier. Music is a carrier. Have you ever heard a song and, you know, <clears throat> one time I was in Goodwill looking for something, you know, I like Goodwill. I love to, and I, it's not that, you know, I need anything, but it's like sometimes we just want to go hunt. And, and you know, if I can find something for a dollar, you, you think I caught a big fish. You know how guys go fishing? I think women go hunting. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we just go hunting. Amen. Well, I'm in the aisle, and I found a really, <laughs> really cute, uh, oh, what are they called? Uh, joggers? And they had little stars on them and everything. And all of a sudden, the, I could hear the music. And it was one of those songs that I used to dance to at, uh, at the high school dances. You know? And I found myself. I found myself kind of. You know what I mean? And I got this check in my spirit. You know, by God. <laughs> I felt this check in my spirit. Anybody know what a check in your spirit is? Mm -hmm. Amen. It's, it's daddy. It's daddy. His name's Father, but he's God. Father God. Amen. It's Daddy taking care of his kids. He, he, he wants to keep us from the snake. He wants to keep the snake out of us. He doesn't want the snake crawling on you. And there was a story the other day about this lady. It was right there. I watched her. She had to go to the doctor because she felt something weird in her. She went to the doctor. The doctor put her out, and they, they, they went inside the woman's mouth because she felt this thing, you know, moving around in her, and they pulled out a four-inch snake. No. I'm not kidding you. I kid you not. It's not some weirdo. I don't go to those news stations. It's a news station. So what happened, it was so foul. I said, God, he said, tell the story. Tell the story. He said, what happened is this woman was sleeping in a place, I guess, where these things, you know, a lot of snakes come and go. And uh, she, had, she sleeps with her mouth open, her husband says. But God said, while men slept. Write that down. While men slept. That's when the snake comes. How did this happen, Jesus? How did this church get so polluted with false doctrine and dirty leaders and people that don't, that don't know Christianity? That we live in another world. We, we live in this world, but we're not a part of this world. We don't partake of satanic things. He said, while men slept, an enemy came. 
and sewed it. Okay? So we need to be careful not to sleep in our Christianity in this location. Amen? Where we have Christ, but we have a, we have a little, little something going on here in the devil's kingdom like Annie did. Well, I tell you, that was the end of that. Amen? I mean, we don't want to give place to the devil. And music is a carrier. It's killed so many people. And you see all this mixture in the church. You know, well, their country music, but their country music is not gospel. Gospel music glorifies God. It talks about God. And sometimes we can have songs, love songs, but it's from a born-again spirit. We don't want to listen to music to carry us away into destruction from a person that's not born again and consecrated unto God. Well, how will you know? You'll know them by their lifestyle. If I was a country western music uh, artist and I claimed to love Jesus Christ, but everywhere I went, they saw my 38 D's hanging out of my shirt, breast, you know something's wrong, amen? Okay, we, we got this going on, don't we? Okay? So we don't want to follow that, amen? So music, music is something that we need to take heed to and not sleep. We need to be alert on what channel we're listening to music. Because whoever created that has a legal space to come into your life. Amen? Amen. You, you, you sleep like that lady did with her mouth wide open. That snake had a legal right to come in and go right down her. Amen? We don't want to give place to the devil. Father, I thank you that we are wise human beings and that we listen to you, Father God, and we do as you have commanded us. Why? So that it will go well for us on the earth and eternal glory with you after this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <music>